Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee at the center of a controversy tonight involving United Airlines. Fellow passenger Jean Marie Simon, a public school teacher here in Washington, D.C., says she was bumped from her first class seat in favor of the Congresswoman. The teacher tweeting a short while ago that um, she still has not gotten an apology. Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, the original tweet said, was in seat 1A, the one I paid for dearly, and the one United gave to her without my consent or knowledge. Fellow congressman on same flight said she does it repeatedly at United. Jackson Lee denying she forced United Airlines to bump the school teacher from first class, and United is saying that after checking their records, after the teacher got a notification that the flight was delayed due to weather, she may have canceled her ticket. The congresswoman maintained she got upgraded without knowing the details, but in the spirit of the season, she's sorry. So all's good, right? Not really. Jackson Lee decided to inject race into this issue, tweeting, among other things, quote, since this was not any fault of mine, the way the individual continued to act appeared to be upon reflection because I was an African-American woman, seemingly an easy target, along with the African-American flight attendant, who was very, very nice. With me now, conservative radio host Larry O'Connor. He's on the radio. Democratic strategist Michael Starr Hopkins. Uh, Merry Christmas to both of you. Thanks for coming in. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, good to see you. Larry, I want to start with you. Why in the world did she inject race into this? I am hesitant to say anything critical of Representative Sheila Jackson Lee because then I'll be called racist. I mean, we're all racist. That this was an outrage. It really is. But here's the hidden little secret that everyone needs to know. I'm in Oklahoma now, but I work in D.C. Uh, so do you, Ed. She's notorious. I mean, uh, Washingtonian Magazine in D.C., a left-leaning publication, year after year, she wins the poll of the most hated congressperson. She, this has nothing to do with race. This has to do with the arrogant, entitled attitude of most incumbents in Washington, D.C., who like to walk up to a counter and say, don't you know who I am? Right. Well, Michael, originally we thought when we were going through this story this morning, it's kind of fr frivolous. It's about a first-class seat. You know, we should be doing bigger issues. Uh, and then we hear the congresswoman went, it was not just one tweet, but a series of tweets uh, suggesting that this issue came up because she's African-American. Why would she inject race into this? Yeah, listen, I'm not going to get into why, what was going on in her head. Um, I don't know whether race was a, a factor in it, but I will say that race has become a huge issue in our political dialogue. And I think a lot of it has to do with tone, and that starts at the top, and that starts with the president. And so, you know, oh. maybe she was, maybe Wait, she was wrong for bringing race into this. How is this the president's fault? How uh, is this the I president's knew this was going to be Trump's fault somehow. <laughs> really? <laughs> listen. <laughs> maybe, maybe race wasn't a factor in this. I'm fine with saying that, but I will okay. say that tone starts from the top. And so I think that race is something that we need to look at when we're talking about issues. And race is something we need to be able to have a comfortable conversation about how we deal with yeah. racial issues. It's kind of tough to have that comfortable conversation when something like this happens and immediately a woman of influence and power, an elected official, decides to make it about race. Then how can we have a conversation at this point? Fair question, When it's not Michael. even about race. Michael, I, w I agreed with almost <laughs> Almost everything you said until you said this had something to do with Donald Trump. Well, no, 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 that's not what I said. I said that the well, our did. conversations and our tone start with the top. The president, who has played footsies, has you know, let's let's not pretend like the president hasn't you know been a bigot. <laughs> I mean, let's just come out and say it. You're let's not pretend like the president. Oh, what does that have to do with? Uh, a, Lee, I, I don't that's have to pretend opinion. to say that. Right, that's your opinion. I, and what does that have to do with a congresswoman elected in her own right? deciding to take kind of this silly dispute on an airplane and say it's because she's African-American. I think the dispute itself is silly. What I'm saying is I think we need to look at the top and where we're getting our leadership from. And when the president acts like a bigot on TV every day, then I think it makes it harder to have so, these kinds of Larry, conversations. So, Larry, a Democratic congresswoman tweets this out that it's about race and it's Donald Trump's fault. Apparently, that's what I'm getting because of the tone. I, I, I just think we've come a long way in this country that the struggle from Rosa Parks being forced to sit in the back of the bus has now turned into Sheila Jackson Lee getting her first class ticket on an airplane. All right, let's well, I mean, you, you referencing ahead. Rosa Parks, I mean, come on, let's not kid ourselves. No, she, it's, you're right. She is a symbol. Sheila Jackson Lee, she suffers for all of us. God bless that woman. She's been through hell. I what noticed some sarcasm there. All right, let's shift gears. When you talk about uh, the tone in this country right now, there's a man named Robert Strong, a liberal activist out in California who decided to basically send a package full of horse manure uh, manure out to uh, a home that the Treasury Secretary owns in California. Take a listen. We, the American people, are returning the gift of the Christmas tax bill because it's complete and utter hoarding. Well, my wife's uh, a, a lawyer, and 
and uh, I'm not too worried. As it turns out, I'm going to be the guy that gets known for horror. Um, Larry, what hard, hard to argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Larry, it was just a couple of weeks ago that you had liberals screaming aimlessly into the sky about Donald Trump. Now yes. they're sending horse poop to the Treasury Secretary. What in the world's going on? It's like they're trying to guarantee his reelection by a landslide in 2020. Let, let me just say, as everyone now finishes up their year and they look at their 401k and they see that their retirement just got about 25 to 30 percent richer over the last year, and you got this guy doing the sophomoric equivalent of leaving a bag of poop on somebody's front porch, on the principal's front porch. Uh, listen, why not bring back Occupy Wall Street while you're at it? Because this will be a landslide for Michael, Trump. If Michael, the left last point. This. What about mm -hmm. the fact that Bernie Sanders over the weekend admitted that something like 91 percent of the middle class is going to feel this tax cut? Uh, the Democratic talking point about this going to the rich is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Well, I just, I'm going to address this guy yeah. in the poop thing. I think that was inappropriate. He shouldn't have done it. But I think it's more uh, inappropriate is the fact that you would be excited, and I don't mean you, Ed, but the other yeah. contributor, the fact Larry. that he'd be excited it's, it's for Trump to I'm be elected excited. again. Hi, Larry. Well, I, <laughs> the fact that you would be excited for the president to be reelected, I mean, this guy literally is an embarrassment to this country. We can disagree on policy, but tone, leadership, honor, yes. integrity, yes. he has none of it. He's not a Republican. If, and if you're really a Republican, then I just, it blows my mind that you would ever you know what, actually last support word, this guy. It is, it is that kind of political strategy going after Trump and the people who support him. They got Hillary Clinton elected last year. You keep it up. That right. is a great plan. Hi, Larry. Hi, Michael. Well, you guys got to know each other now. Merry Christmas. Thanks. All right. We'll see, I'll see you when I'm in D.C. All right. See you soon.